an important part of the subjective refraction for presbyopes is the determination of the necessary power for reading ads. Many methods are used to determine reading ads. We will only describe the simplest method here. There is a reading card that flips down on the foropter, but many practitioners prefer to use trial frames to allow the patient to read in down gaze. Extra plus sphere is added to the patient's distance manifest refraction with the amount of plus sphere estimated from the patient's age. One and a quarter diopter reading ads are usually the first ones prescribed between the ages of 40 and 45, progressing to plus two and a half diopters by age 55 to 60. With the trial correction in place, the patient is given a reading card and asked to move the card toward her or away from her until the print blurs in each direction thus exploring the useful range of near vision. If the range needs to be moved closer, the power of the reading ads is increased. If the range is too close, the power of the reading ads is reduced. It is important to resist the temptation to prescribe more plus power than the patient needs, for reading ads that are too strong are the most common cause of rejection of new glasses. When the final refraction is complete, the results should be recorded. A non-cycloplegic refraction is called a manifest refraction, usually abbreviated capital M. Sphere, cylinder, and axis are recorded for each eye, along with the visual acuity obtained. The reading ad is also recorded, along with the near visual acuity. If cycloplegia was used, the name of the drug is given, or an abbreviation is used according to local practice. These numbers are not the prescription for glasses or contact lenses. They are simply the refractive findings. Prescribing is the final step, taking into account the type of refractive error, the patient's age and needs, the old glasses, and so forth. Often the refractive findings must be altered for the new glasses to be accepted comfortably. This concludes our program on subjective refraction. By understanding the basics of astigmatism and cross cylinders, and by practicing the step-by-step -step techniques we have demonstrated here, you will be well on your way to mastering subjective refraction. Reviewing this program from time to time during the learning process should help, especially in polishing your instructions to the patient for best efficiency. Automated refractors, both subjective and objective, are becoming increasingly reliable and accurate, but there are many situations where there is no substitute for a carefully performed conventional cross-cylinder refraction. For example, if you find yourself in the outback of Australia refracting an Aborigine tribal elder, you will have need of Jackson's special lens. If Edward Jackson were alive today, he would undoubtedly be amazed to see the technological advances in the field of clinical refraction. He would be comforted, however, to visit the outpatient clinics, the private offices, the consulting rooms, and even to look inside many of the automated refractors to find the very same lens that 100 years ago he found was far more useful and far more used than any other one lens in his trial set.